Well, he is currently a conservative political commentator across various news outlets, but many Marylanders know Michael Steele from his time as the state's lieutenant governor and as the chair of the National Republican Party. Mr. Steele joins us now to discuss current GOP politics. Thanks so much for being Great here. Great to be here, absolutely. It's good to be back in the neighborhood. <laughs> Glad to have you. Yeah. So let's get started with all of the latest firings and resignations. According to Business Insider, they report that the Trump administration has the highest turnover of any administration in modern history. What are your thoughts on well, this? Well, yeah, it's, uh, it's been a real problem because the idea is to get people hired, get them in, have them settle, and then begin to... Uh, execute on the on the president's uh, agenda, whatever that happens to be for that agency or department. Uh, what we're finding here is that there has been, from the very beginning, a, a level of concern about what the policy changes are that the president wants and a clear articulation of those changes to uh, all the other drama that goes on uh, in the administration that has really taken away from the ultimate narrative of on tax cuts infrastructure, immigration, et cetera, uh, which has made it much more difficult for secretaries uh, to do their jobs. And three, quite honestly, the revolving door, uh, people who are coming in and saying, I can't do this and leaving, but then the inability to actually replace them, which has been a real problem for the administration to get people to come in and say, hey, I want to be on the team. A lot of people are going, well, no, I don't know if I want to be on the team. In fact, you've seen some people have their names put forward and then withdraw their names um, for various cabinet positions. So it's a real issue. Yeah, so speaking of the revolving door, um, it seems like people are scared to maybe take a position. Do you think that this is going to be a liability in the future? Well, it is. I mean, it, it, the, the idea is, and you see the president now uh, wanting to s get his cabinet at least right where he needs it to be with the exit of the Secretary of State, uh, Mr. Tillerson, uh, and the other changes that are happening at that level, the president himself has said, well, now I can get the cabinet I've always wanted. Well, I thought you'd already done that, but clearly that's not been the case for him. So he'll put a good face on it, but it doesn't change the underlying facts, which is uh, very difficult for him to get good people to stay, get good people, new people to come in. And, and with the um, impending elections this November, if there's a change in the House, for example, or the Senate or both, uh, then that becomes even more problematic in terms of the president's ultimate agenda and having people who can go then and, and push that agenda with a, a Congress that clearly will be much more hostile. In the 20 plus years we've known each other, yeah. we've talked an awful lot about the Republican Party. You've always touted it. You've always been behind it. And in the different positions, you've tried to bring minorities into the Republican Party. What direction do you see the GOP going right now? Well, a difficult one, to be honest about it. It's been a great frustration of mine to having spent uh, a lot of years before becoming national chairman uh, making that case. And, and certainly here in my own backyard of Prince George's County, uh, as a county chairman, going up against the likes uh, of the political leadership here in, in this county uh, and still going into neighborhoods and staking the claims and talking about an agenda that was uh, forward-looking and inclusive, uh, which was very important. Wayne Curry and I always used to have this, this back and forth uh, uh, struggle because he didn't think the party would get there and could do that. Um, and I always insisted it could, and I went out and set out to try to prove that. And as national chairman, we did, to a large degree, electing African Americans to Congress, governorships, uh, state, state houses, and judgeships around the country, um, as well as Hispanics uh, and, and women. And yet now I find uh, the party sort of looking at the house that we built in 2010 and, uh, and tearing the floorboards up, breaking the windows, and basically deconstructing that effort because they're following, I think, a, a, a tougher, uh, I would even say uglier narrative that is more exclusionary. And that's not uh, good for the health of uh, the party presently or its future. Speaking of exclusionary, I want to go back a couple of weeks ago. You were at the Conservative Political Action yep. Committee, CPAC, here in National it, Harbor, uh, in National Harbor yeah. um, where a spokesperson for the group actually came out and said, and I quote, we elected Michael Steele to be the RNC chair because he's a black guy. Right. 
that must have had a dramatic impact. On oh, it was it was uh, it was very dramatic. In fact, uh, uh, we had uh, a couple of harsh things to say about it, and then sat down. Look, you know, we'll, we'll get uh, Matt Schlapp, who's the head of uh, CPAC, to come on my radio show, uh, and uh, we did a special engagement with him the d next day, uh, and sat down. And, and I wanted to know. I mean, I've known Matt a long time, uh, and and watched his kids grow up and been a part of that community with him. Uh, and to say something like that indicated to me, again, going back to what I just said, this, this shift in the direction and the focus of, by some of the party to uh, sort of, I guess, bring themselves closer to Donald Trump and, and all of that, um, to not be offend, uh, offend the president. I, I don't know what it is. Quite honestly, really don't care what it is. Uh, my thing was, uh, as long as I was in the party, we weren't going to stand for it. We we're going to push back on that because that's not the party that I joined. It's not the party that I belong to. And you're hearing more and more Republicans say that. Uh, wherever I've gone around town since then, that's the one thing people come up to me and they say, I cannot believe he actually said that. Um, uh, and again, I think it's indicative of a lot of concerns about the changing direction of the, of the country, uh, the browning of America, if you will, in many respects. Uh, and a lot of people are sort of harkening back and longing for a time that really never really existed in, in America, uh, the good old days, whatever that was. It wasn't that great for a whole lot of people uh, who've been trying to build a better future for their families and their communities. Why would we want to take a step back? And that comment just showed that ignorance for me. We're out of time, but we have one quick sure. question for you. <laughs> sure. So you're talking about the shift, the browning of the country. Do you feel as though the Republican Party, um, you know, has a problem with racism right now? They have a problem with race. They have a problem with uh, talking about it, confronting it, understanding it, knowing, knowing more importantly how it imp impacts men and women of color. Uh, and, and, and just taking, well, we always talk about, you know, spend a moment in my shoes, walk my walk. Well, okay, spend a moment, not just in my shoes, but look at the world the way I see it. And, and understand why I feel the way I do about these things. All right. We could go on for hours on this. Uh, All right. Thank you it. so much for joining us again. Alrighty. And you can find out much more about Michael Steele at his website, steelforum.com.